Hi, it's Jasmine. You know, that girl who did you know what way before the internet ever existed. Join me and my special guest every week as we talk about anything and everything because nothing is too taboo. So punch your ticket and get on board the crazy train with me, Jasmine Saint Clair. All aboard! I hope you're enjoying the ride on Crazy Train podcast. This week's guest is one of my favorites, and it was such a great conversation because we went down the road of the 90s and the 90s in LA and all kinds of hijinks. She's definitely known for her tongue. I don't know who has a bigger tongue like her or Gene Simmons. Let's welcome to the show, Minaj Twa. Oh my God, this is a reunion. I am so happy to see you. And I know a lot of guys were asking about Minaj Twa, not to have a Minaj Twa or anything like that, but about you. And you look gorgeous. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. You're beautiful also. I miss seeing you. you. Oh, thank you. See, you're one of the few people that misses seeing me and my snarky snide um, remarks and shit. But Absolutely. <laughs> well, you get it, girl. I mean, okay, your tongue. That is the first thing. How mm -hmm. long is your tongue? Hmm. Well, I got it measured back in, um, when was this? 1994. I made, I got some lollipops done, some like molds of my tongue into the lollipop, you know, and, um, uh, it's about six and a half inches, about six and a half inches from back to front. Oh my God. That's okay. Did you compare it to Gene Simmons? Watch this. This is something no one can do. Oh my God. <laughs> you can put water in that. Yes, I can like you like dinner it's a cup. <laughs> but wait, if you do that and you put water in it and then you just do like that, a you, shot. Just you could splash water in someone's face? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I can do, uh, it's a lot of weird things I can do with this thing. I've never like, you know, I, I didn't realize it was really long until I was in like sixth grade, I guess. And, you know, outside pl playing around and I stuck my tongue out and everybody ran. <laughs> Did the boys run too? Absolutely. <laughs> I wonder if they were gay or just really scared. Um yeah. Did you compare that with Gene Simmons? Because you said you met him at a porn convention once. Did you like stand? Yeah, I met him um, back in it was, it was had to have been like ninety four, ninety five, and um, you know those uh, a you know the AVN conventions are crazy and CES, you know. So, but um, he said that uh, he said that he liked my tongue, and I was like, like your tongue, and that was it. Like, yeah, yeah. That's it. You know, we're tongue people. He actually had a magazine called Tongue. Yeah. Did you know the magazine? I was. And I was really trying to get in, there, get in there a long time ago, but I wasn't able to. That's weird. He should have had you like on the cover with your tongue. <laughs> Absolutely. And like had a centerfold just with your tongue, you know? Hey, I would have done it. I did a lot of things with that thing, this thing back in the day. <laughs> You know, I'm wondering, like, I didn't really watch a lot of porn. I just knew everyone or a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Who are some of your favorite guys to work with? And I'm sure you are on everyone's list with that tongue, by the way. Oh, wow. Um, uh, I did a lot of stuff with uh, Dick Nasty and um, did some stuff with Ron Jeremy. I liked working with him here and there. He was he was cool. He was He was gentle. He was a nice guy. I could deal with him here and there, but, um, you know, I had to definitely grab the hair on his back and hold on tight sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You talk about that. But, um, I enjoyed working with like, I did, I did a lot of things with, um, I like working with Shawn Michaels and guys like that. Mr. Marcus was cool too. Sometimes if he wasn't spreading mucus, <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> I used to call him Mr. Mucus back in the day. What do you mean? He's always you... spitting. I don't like guys to spit when, you know, okay, if we're doing something and you're constantly spitting on me, I don't like it. 
you know. Yeah. I have to go home smelling like you. It's disgusting. Or I, I shower as soon as I'm done with the scene, but he spits a lot. I don't think like guys realize some of that can be gross. I mean, here and there, but when you're constantly doing that, you know, dropping one in your, it's not cool. <laughs> Well, I did something like that once, and I don't know if this traumatized the guy. I'll tell you what I did. You'll appreciate this. Remember Brick Majors? He was a tall, good-looking, blonde guy with glasses. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So he came in my mouth, and I spat it back in his face. Oh, good one. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, those are the days. You can get... I I mean... I don't know if you can get away with it today in this content creation phase that right. you're doing because these bitches, they didn't work around people like mm. us. Guaranteed, they've right. never met anyone like us and never will because you don't want to yeah, meet it was, it was more classy back then than mm-hmm. anything. I can say, you know, we did try to make it a little bit romanticized maybe, but not so much gutter, um, you know, gutter trash like you know what i mean like get over here and fuck me you know like uh. <laughs> yeah, the age, well the award show was way more classy like dominique simone was telling me she had to wait like three hours in line to get in they're like you can get oh, to the yeah. back of the line and i guarantee that girl's dress was way over two three hundred dollars i'm sure it wasn't some fashion nova thing she showed up in. i i'm 100 yeah. percent sure yeah, these girls makes show up and, she's gorgeous but then these girls yes. it's like there's no glamour there's no like real hair and makeup it just put your shit mm-hmm. on and let's go content create do you have an only fans you do anything with that if you do no i don't i don't have an only fans um I've, I've you know i just moved here to texas and i'm trying to get adjusted just to the life and the people right now. And I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying not to make it be a big mistake, but <laughs> you know, mistake. <laughs> I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really vibing with the people here yet. I, I don't know why it's just not clicking with me. So I spend a lot of time alone. I'm working on a book right now. And um, I do, um, I don't want, I don't know how much of only fans I want to do because um, some of that gets really, really crazy. You know, they want you to do things that I'm not willing to do right now. Yeah. Well, where'd you move from? I moved from Los Angeles. Well, it's fuck LA. Um, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Were you born in LA? Where are you from originally? I'm originally from Texas, but I've, I've never lived here. Like, um, you know, I, I stayed here when I was a kid and then I was in California the whole time. Like, you know, I lived, I grew up in California. So yeah, LA, you know, the the hard street stuff going on there was crazy. But that's I think where it I'm got from. worse. I, I actually prefer the 90s in LA when you had all the street gangs and shit. I, re, I know that yeah. sounds, because there's too much gentrification, right? Now, I used to live in South Central when I first moved here. I saw this beautiful, or I was, I, I had some, I had some friends that were, that were some crips. They were my neighbors. Now you go back, you get these retarded little hipsters going there, trying to figure where, like, where's Easy es house? It's like, bitch, they have not gentrified this area completely. You just need to go. Like you need to right. go. So I, yeah. I pray to the gangs or the gods of the gangs for two nights. Just come on out and terrorize those areas that are gentrified, whether it's like <laughs> South Central, whether it's like uh, Los Feliz, just come out and get rid of these people. What's it like in Texas? Yeah. For you? Like, what do you see the differences? Um, for me, it's, um, you know, I live in Trump town, you know, it's a lot of houses and stuff. My, you know, it's a lot of houses, big houses everywhere. Um, it's a lot of nice men. I will say it's lots of single sexy, um, I I don't know if the majority of them are single, but they look really successful and like really sexy out here. Some of the men that's, you know, my age, but um, you can't tell if they're married or not, but they do flirt and stuff like that. But the one thing that Texas has shown me is that um, the food, 
they eat abundance of food. It's not a small steak. It's a steak bigger than your head. Um, it's not a, you know, everything is big out here. No doubt. Everything. Everything. <laughs> the guys? <laughs> Everything's pretty big out here. Some bulls out here, sis. <laughs> Girl, look, just look at the wedding band. Look at the finger, the ring finger on these guys. If you see a tan line and they start talking mm -hmm. to you, say, so how's married life, bud? <laughs> right, right. That's happened to me a lot, you know. But I, I get approached by a lot of young guys, mm -hmm. you know, in their 20s and stuff. I, you know, I don't think they know I'm old enough to be their mom, <laughs> you know, and whoop their ass but they don't get it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but they like older women because older women, we don't present the complications of the youth. Like these young girls today, we don't present the games. Like, you know yeah. what you want, right? Would you yeah. date a younger yeah. guy? Um, I don't, it depends. You know, he has to have his shit together, <laughs> you know, cause I'm, I don't really go for that. I'm more of a, a sapiosexual. Mm, what's that you know i'm into you have to be smart in order to fuck with me literally i don't really do the uh, dumb guys gangster guys rappers i don't do the uh those guys but I, I have in the past but that's where you learn uh -uh. you know i like smart guys doctors i mean I've, I've actually dated a blind guy before huh i dated a blind guy before <laughs> Where'd you meet him? Don't look at me like that, girl. Look, I didn't have to put on no makeup and, and comb my hair at the time. <laughs> well, how did you find this guy? This is interesting. <laughs> no, I want to know. Absolutely. Well, he was a DJ in Philadelphia. I mean, he's pretty famous. He was kind of famous, mm -hmm. but he was blind, totally blind. And he's him and Stevie Wonder were friends, you know. I dated him for a while. Um, one time he was cooking me dinner in the, in the dark. I walked in his house and it was pitch black in there and he was cooking dinner. Did he yeah. still have a house? Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, he had huge screen TVs everywhere. I think he could kind of see visions a little bit, little bitty, you know, images. But, yeah, he was totally blind. I didn't have to comb my hair or nothing, girl. I was just really happy with him. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm scared about him cooking with the lights off. My neighbor just, uh, she she's a bit crazy and she used to have people over. She would wear her shades and she almost burned her mansion down. This is like a few years ago. She's a real nut job. Uh, but that's a person that could see that's wearing shades. So this man cannot see. See at all, no. Cook? Um, He made the best steak and asparagus I've ever seen. He did it in the dark. And that was, but you know what? I heard that people that are blind, they dream of driving. So he used to have major dreams of driving all the time. Like, can you imagine that? It's not missing anything. It's not too imaginative. <laughs> it's dangerous to say aloud. <laughs> it's dangerous to drive. What the? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know about this, but. Now you, you grew up in LA mostly, like when you came out to LA, how did you, and I'm sure you've answered this before. I just got to hear your story. How did someone that's mm -hmm. smart like you and eloquent get even involved in porn? Yeah. We were classier totally back funny. then. We were prettier back then, but still yeah, it's yeah. a different way how to did I do that? Well, you know what? My mom was on drugs really bad in my youth. Um, crack cocaine tore up a lot of black neighborhoods and, uh, I'm a, you know, I'm a definitely a product of that. And so I ended up being a foster kid and I did, you know, as soon as I was um, old enough to get out, you know, they kicked me out. So, you know, yeah, I was stripping out of high school. Ugh. My name was Chocolate Shake. Chocolate <laughs> baby. Woo! Milkshake, baby. Uh, it was Chocolate Shake. I was a stripper at 18 right away, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I built from there. I, a few customer, a customer bought me a car. You know, put me in a, a my own apartment. You know, bought me some boobs. You know, back then. <laughs> That's how you got to do things, right? I, I mean, well, you know, that. the customers were were very good back then. Back in the '90s, think mm -hmm. about it. Like, 
it was some good customers back then. You could make up to what a thousand or so a night if you're really working it, especially you know with the drinks. Yep, making them buy drinks and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, my name was Chocolate Shake. I ran like I I would do the day shift and the night shift. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, you start at 10 a.m. and you get off at 2 a.m. 10? Take break. Where, where were you working? Which um, I worked at Geno Southern Bells in, out here in Dallas for a little bit. And then I worked at, um, when I moved to L.A., I worked at First Kings in the Barbary Coast. Have you ever heard of them? They're right off of I'm Rosecrans. One is new mm-hmm. and one is topless. So First Kings was topless and Barbary Coast was nude. They probably changed the name by now, but it was called the Barbary Coast back then when I started. Yep. And I just went back and forth. And then I met someone, um, I met Ron Hightower um, in the adult film industry. And I did my first movie maybe two weeks after I met him. And then I went to Jim South. Of course, you got to go to Jim South. Yeah. World modeling. You got to get your thing done in world modeling. (laughs) I did that and started doing like more stuff. So that's how it went. But yeah, I was like, ugh, I was almost homeless there until I like realized that, oh shit, I got pussy. <laughs> and a tongue. And a tongue, too. And a tongue. <laughs> and but how did so you come up with your name? Uh, Minaj. Uh-huh. Or uh, Minaj, you know, I always had a girlfriend and a boyfriend in the strip club. So I had a girlfriend at the strip club and, you know, you know how that works. (laughs) You can only be attracted to men for so long in there, right? Mm, Not really. I was just drugging my customers, but I was doing all this. (laughs) Well, I was working in New York City as a house girl and I would crush up an aspirin and tell the guy it was cocaine and take the money for the dealer. Um, I was putting NyQuil in people's drinks. So like I I heard about Hustlers, that movie after. I'm like, those bitches don't know what the fuck they're doing. Like I would literally have the guy in the back room so fucked up. I took his hand and like sign, right? They call later to do chargebacks, but who knows what happens. Um, I, I was never into girls. That's the thing. But I get it, though. Like, you, it's easy to turn gay against some of these men that are out there. Well, when you're in a strip club all day long, while I'm talking day and night, you know, you do get tired of men. Just like, um, you know, some of the men in the adult industry get tired of men. I mean, get tired of women. Why? <laughs> We're not bad. I don't know, but I've heard of some some people jumping the fence here and there. Huh? Doing bisexual videos. I, I've heard of some guys jumping the fence and doing bisexual videos and gay videos. Oh, Earl Slate, for example. Remember Earl? Yep. Okay. Guess so what? I, they get paid 10 times as much. You know really? that, right? No, what? I dated him. I dated him, then I kicked him out, and he ended up, um, he died. Well, he was murdered a few years ago and I got called into the murder investigation because we were oh. hanging out. No, we were just friends. No, 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 no. He was off drugs, supposedly. I thought we went out for sushi a few days before that. Um, and I had a chance to curse him off and all that stuff. Um, and then a few days later, they found him in a hotel in Van Nuys, dead. It was drugs. But I think someone gave him a hot shot. Hmm. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. You know what? I used to go to the uh, after hour clubs in LA, you know, the ones downtown that stay yeah. open until 10 in the morning, 8 AM or whatever, you know, 10 AM or whatever. And, um, uh, I've been, um, I think I was drugged before there. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be careful. Like you especially like when in- you're drugged, but, but, but I knew what to do, you know, you got to go and, get rid of that whatever that is in your that you just drank so I did that but I still felt a little like I had a helmet on I felt like I had a helmet on my head like when you're when you're getting drugged you can feel as if there's something on your it feels like there's something over your brain it's a weird feeling felt that feeling I knew what it was I went in the bathroom and did my thing and when I came out I just knew someone drugged me right away 
it's very messed up but yeah that happens what got you out of adult like what was your final thought like i gotta get the fuck out of here or were you just done with it what made me really get out was just seeing some of the guys that i worked with do gay movies and then not tell you and uh i felt you know really big i felt funny because hey man we're 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 trying to we're trying to live here damn it don't be trying to kill my black ass literally you know and um a couple guys i've seen them do like i said cross over the fence and no one tell us and you know we're testing every 20 days of our lives we're risking everything putting our pussy on the line and they're you know over there just being ratchet so i had to like say, you know, this, this industry is not worth me dying or catching something and it's, and the money isn't worth it. I can go and do something else. So after I got out, I did HBO real sex. Okay. How was right. that? It was great. And, you know, I started doing music videos. I did, um, Beanie Siegel's video. I did a lot of rap videos. I was dancing for Luke. I was like an ass shaker on stage, sticking my tongue mm -hmm. out. <laughs> at the Luke concert. <laughs> I did that for a while. Uh, I just kind of maintained myself by just doing other things besides porn. Mm -hmm. Because I had to, you know, I had a couple of porn guys, you know, kind of hound me down. Hey, I'll pay you more for a scene, all this. But I said, you know what, man? Fuck y'all. I have to I have to keep it moving. I have to keep the ball rolling. This is not where I'm gonna stay. Okay. And um, so I just started doing other things. I did a, a documentary for Showtime about bachelor parties. And then I started doing a radio show with, um, uh, I was uh, assisting uh, this girl named Golden Girl in Philadelphia. You know, I was her radio. So I did some radio stuff and, you know, you just have to keep your, your life moving, even though, you know, some people want you to stay in that industry, but you have to know what's better for you. And, um, you know, I saw, I saw someone I did like a few movies with, I mean, sucking a major slong fire. Ow. Yes. And so that made me, yeah, you know, you guys will do anything. Your booty is loose, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Brother got boot loose ass booties and stuff just going around booty juice. I'm I can't deal with it. That's why I'm still single too. Like LA, you know, all the feminine guys, the guys that want to oh. carry purses and shit, Birkin bags and Louis Vuitton purses, and I, I don't have time for that. You know, stop putting barrettes in your hair and trying to holler at me. <laughs> it's just you retarded. know what I'm saying. Well, take the yeah. bag and beat him in the head with it. out, you know. I'll have to pull it out, the strap strap. Yeah, but they might like that, you know? <laughs> I don't know, girl. I'm not Some into that. Some of them may like that strap strap. I heard, you know, hey, it is what it is. Yeah, I think I'll pass on that. I think in Texas, they're more manly. I think your best bet's there in Texas, and uh, you'll probably meet someone. I went on a dating app finally, right? I got to tell you. Okay, so... This is horrible. It's going to make me sound crazy, but I'm like, a, I'm a hardcore conservative, right? Even though I did a gangbang, but um, like I was a conservative at the age of 10 when I led the Republican club, we went to the, um, to the Reagan, to when Reagan had gotten, <laughs> when he was in, when he was inducted and I still have my t-shirt. Okay. So uh, the inauguration day thing, so it's been like a weird struggle to meet guys in LA. So I joined a conservative dating app. Oh my God. There were liberals on there. It was horrible. This guy had his pronouns in his profile. I'm like, bitch, you're a liberal. I said, real men don't put pronouns down. We, we, we can't have this on there. I reported his ass. Then there was another one who had a barrette who said he's very, he's very, um, oh, he had the, the bitch bun, like half up, half down. He said oh, he's yeah. like, oh, very, um, I'm so uh, confident in my sexuality. I don't need to, you know, prove anything, but I'm here to meet all kinds of people. 
So I questioned him. I said, so who did you vote for the last election? And where do your values stand? Are you a gun supporter right. or not? He mm -hmm. just, well, it doesn't make a difference. I like pussy and I like dick sometimes. Yeah, I reported him too. <laughs> but there are oh, liberals God. on there. They're infiltrating the app. I had to get off of there. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. That damn debate scared the yeah. shit out of me. Girl. What do you mood you mean? Come on. I like when Biden was answering and then it sounded like a moo at the end. He's like, oh, moo. <laughs> 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 but honestly, Melania Trump, okay, so she's gorgeous, but you know, she was an escort before. She belonged to a really high end agency where these are high end girls, right? So they'd be models. So see, she's just mm -hmm. a high end hooker that got lucky. You know, good for yeah, her, though. Yeah. Like, you hit the jackpot, girl. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I used to um, be a, um, I was the anal nurse at this, um, at this dungeon. I worked at a dungeon. I was a, Definitely, you know, in the beaten ass all day, but um, I ended up being like the top, like, uh, you know, these guys were coming in like on their lunch breaks and I was tying them up, not like letting them out of the, <laughs> out of the for an hour. Woo! <laughs> I was making guys in the chairs. Hey, get on all fours. I need a seat. <laughs> Girl, they were about to fire me. They were like, you know, you're a little rough on these guys. <laughs> I was doing all type of wrong shit to them, but they oh. like me. <laughs> they like me the most. You know that one over there on Santa Monica? It's like close to Astro Burger. Yeah, that's in Boysville. That's where Boys I, I worked yeah. there for a while. I worked at, at that dungeon for the. Mm -hmm. I, I made a lot of money there too, just role playing and beating ass. Cock and ball torture, a little bit of, you know, a little play, a little stuff going on, a little paddling. I did that for a while. Was Biden in there? I had CEOs from like Capitol Records. I had different actors that you would not believe, but you know, it's, you know. I get it. It's, it's something like that going on in there. There's some thick freaks out there, girl. I mean, it's always they the love me. I was, oh God, I was young and spicy. I used to just do them so bad. <laughs> Lick my shoe. <laughs> it was terrible. I don't know about this. It was fun to I feel like you could do that still. Like I'm sure there's a place in Dallas if you wanted to, or if you wanted to start that up and have girls work for you i'm sure there are places and you could you could take that cowbell yeah. and like lasso their asses in yeah <laughs> all type of stuff get that whip shit what we talking about some slavery <laughs> no you know what though my thing is um i started taking that attitude home i started bringing that madam attitude home and it wasn't good you know I was talking to different people like that and like even at the grocery store, you know, I was telling the grocery lady, pack my shit and don't let the fruit touch the vegetables. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> so I was like bringing my attitude everywhere I went amongst my family. It oh. wasn't cool. I couldn't, I was, I, it was hard to separate the two sometimes. <laughs> so. I had to give it a rest. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good idea. You know, yeah. did your family know what you were doing, that you were doing porn at one point? Absolutely. Like, my mom found out at 7-Eleven. Oh, shit. And she saw me on the cover of Blacktail Magazine. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> her friend was like, that looks like your daughter. I see her eyes because, you know, it blacks out the body and all you see is like the face or something there. You know, it's like black plastic over the magazine, you know, like 7-Eleven or so. And my mom was like, that's not my daughter. And her friend was like, yes, the fuck it is. <laughs> and it was me. Was she mad? She was like, what the hell? Yeah, she was like bugged out a little bit. But I told her, I said, mind your business. I'm grown. Mind your business. You know? That's a bit cheap. 
mind your beeswax, okay? I'm yes. I'll, I'll do what I, I want. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I, well, didn't you find it difficult back in that era being African American breaking into that business? Do you want to spice things up in the bedroom? Well, go to adamandeve.com where you can get something for yourself or that special someone. adamandeve.com and put in the code crazy train, that's crazy with a K, and get 50% off of most items and a bunch of free goodies. Again, it's adamandeve.com and put in my code crazy train, that's crazy with a K, and enjoy up to 50% off of most items and of course some great freebies. <laughs> It was crazy. I'm not going to lie to you. It was a lot of people who didn't want to work with uh, African-Americans. Um, it was a few people that really didn't want to work with me and I, I was okay with it. You know, I didn't bother me. It was, a, it was a tough thing, but you know, growing up being a stripper back in the day in the early nineties, um, you know, strip clubs only took three black women, a club. Yeah. The limit is three because if you get more than three, Girl, here comes the neighborhood, like here comes the the hood, the hood shit, you know, and they didn't want that. There's a lot of gang stuff going on. So, you know, three or more, unless it was an all black club or, you know, something like that. Even Latino clubs, you get like three black women in there. That's it. They don't want you in there like attracting you know, others and stuff like that. They didn't want it. So it was, it was okay with me. I was just down in there to make my money. I didn't, I didn't care about any of that. The race factor doesn't bother me. I grew up in America my whole life. I'm 51 years old and I've seen it all, done it all. Us black people, we just, it doesn't even bother us hardly anymore. It's, it's sad, but it doesn't bother us. Well, this bothers me because at Barbary Coast, I know Barbary Coast very well. What was the other club again? Uh, the First King. The First King. First Kings. And they were both, uh, one of them was all black. The First King was all like lots of black dancers in there. You're making me obsessed now. Barbary Coast. Here we go. Barbary Coast, yeah. Gardena. Barbary okay. Coast. I'm going to see if it's still here. Gardena. Right. It closed, it opens at 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. on Wednesday. Here we go. Ron's Barbary Coast, 13420 yep. Gardena. They actually have an Instagram, girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're on Instagram. I used to dance there. And then across the street is the First Kings. It's another club that you can make money. I used to make money on both sides, but I would do the well, day shift there and then the night shift at Barbary Coast course. or the day shift, you know, either way. Hold on. I'm so sorry. I'm looking at this. Normally I don't do this, but now I'm obsessed because I like old strip clubs, like how they were yeah. running before. Here we go. First I came closed. Too. So they closed down. Um, here we go. The Yelp they review. Closed. Here yeah. comes the Yelp review. Ready? Um, mm -hmm. Maybe they're closed right now. Were they a nighttime place? Uh, yeah. I think they're they were a daytime. Park. Yeah, here we go. They only got three and a half, uh, three and a half stars on Yelp. Which I yeah, think because is very shootings, shameful. well, it's been a lot of shootings and things going on there. You'd be surprised. <laughs> I mean, you're right on you're in Gardena. You know, that's that's you know, that's the that's where the gangs are. That's the hood right there. But it was fun yeah. going there and working and doing my thing. You know, I worked at uh, the Catch before. It's like a gay club out there in, in L.A. See, you worked at all these places. I wasn't a house, I didn't do house girl. I wasn't a house girl in LA. I was a house girl in Manhattan. Um, I worked at Sapphires. I actually threw a drink in another girl's face. So they fired me. And then I came back two days later because she was, she was one of those like back in that era, you know, you had like the over stuff. So this is before, you know, Ukrainian Russian girl come for hand job. Before those bitches came in, we had, did I just say that? Yeah, we had like the stuff silicone hose from Jersey that came over the fucking river to work in Manhattan. So there's a difference between a Manhattan stripper and a Jersey stripper. Jersey strippers didn't have perfectly tan bodies. Jersey strippers wore cheap perfume from the drugstore and they had really horrible clothes and two inch heels, right? Manhattan girls, we had platforms, we had really gorgeous gowns, we had perfect hair and perfect tans. Exactly. So this hoe came over and then 
her annoying accent was what did it for me first. Then, well, you know, yous, I said the word isn't yous, it's you are or just you, not yous. Yous is not a yous. fucking word in the dictionary, yeah. okay? Let's just get that straight. They I was say like, that a lot. That <laughs> yeah, I was like 20 or 21 years old saying this shit. And, yes. Well, you know, you're sitting with my customer. I'm like, I'll sit whatever the fuck I want. Like, what exit oh, are you goodness. from anyway? So she wouldn't mm. let up. Then I walked out to the customer and I sat on his lap on purpose. Then she came over. I just like storming over. I just took my thing. I threw it in her face. Like that was it. You know, it's such <laughs> a difference. Like that probably works now. It's strip clubs. They hire anyone now. You know, you see this yes. shit, bro? Like where do they find Yes, I used people? to find at strip clubs all the time. Like I yeah. swear it, it was out of nowhere. Somebody wanted to jump you about a customer. Right? Always about a customer. Literally like. This guy is giving us both money. She's mad. Don't get it. That's my customer. Okay. I got kicked in the mouth one time. Like we used to like heat up curling irons huh. before the fight. So we could really fight with the curling irons, you know? <laughs> Did you beat the shit out of this girl for trying? I hope you yes. beat the shit out of her good. Yes. That's what you're supposed to do. Stayed into it with people. It was not a thing. You're supposed to beat them up. <laughs> and you got to defend yourself all the time. It's just nothing. You can't. And if you don't, the next day you're going to have a problem again. So that strip club, you got to defend yourself all the time. It's intriguing that you were in that era, like in that era, in that part of LA. It's very intriguing to me because I never meet a lot of people that were in that area during that time. And people don't understand it. No, these were like real gangs that were fighting. Like you had Bloods, you had Crip. You had Sorenos, you had all these Mexican street gangs, Grape Street, Crips, everything, and they don't get this is what it is. And you see these young guys nowadays, yo, man, I'm gangster, yo, I'm a rapper. You're not fucking, mm -hmm. put your pants up, kiddo. No way. You know? Stop it, because life is so short, they don't even realize that that, that thing is final. That gunshot is final. Like, these guys are not playing. They are playing to kill you, literally, so... I stay away. I used to date a gangster and, you know, he was tough around all these motherfuckers. He was so tough, but around me, he was like a gentle flower. Okay. Literally. And that's what they mainly do. Most gangsters, they be tough. They're tough around a lot of men. They get around you and they melt. Literally. They turn into marshmallows. Yeah. It's funny. It's yeah. Very, yeah. I dated a few bikers <laughs> in my time and I'm friends with them, but Oh my yeah. God. Oh, you're yeah. just the sweetest guys around us. That. Only us though. Like only women. Other than that, they don't want to do anything around guys. They, they will, you know, mean mug guys all day and, you know, hold the strap. And then, but when they get around us, they put the strap down. They want to be really nice. They want to be gentle teddy bears all of a sudden. <laughs> 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 but are you a gentle teddy bear back or are you a bitch? Me, I just yeah. go all in with that alpha personality and fuck their stuff <laughs> up. But yeah. So, I, I mean, I miss kind of that era in LA because nowadays it's just so different than what it was. It was a more pleasant time. Now, if you miss it was. pronoun someone, it's like the fucking World War Three. Oh my God, you must pronoun me. Oh my God. Yeah, like, um, I I identify as a cat. I'm meow? like, bitch, I didn't know you was a cat. <laughs> yeah, let me get you a sandbox for that. I mean, it, it's true. Like, what I, I guess nowadays, because I get girls that are currently involved in the adult business on the show, a lot of them create content mm -hmm. with gay. Like, it's too inclusive, I feel like. They're letting in transgendered people to have sex with them. I get my body, my choice. But back then, we chose who we worked with, right? Except for a gangbang, yeah, of course. Absolutely. But transgenders. We we yes. I have a friend that uh, she does OnlyFans. We're not friends anymore because of her, just of her loose. Like, I can't, I don't mind being, you know, I, I've done all the things that I want to do in life. Like, especially with the adult industry. I've been a stripper. I've been a straight up little thought thought before. You know what I mean? Like, I was an escort. I've done a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? But what I can say is there's a time and place for that always, you know, and I'm not a slut shamer. 
but I don't believe in women. You know, we us her someone coming to see me, hanging out with me, going to Walmart, looking like she's about to like go to the club. I mean, we got the coochie cutters on, we got the see-through shirt with the nipple showing. It's tough. It's up like this. It's kids around. You know, <clears throat> you know. I had a son, so um, I had to raise my son and actually change my dress when I had to go and do a PTA meeting or take him to a supermarket or something. You don't want to look like that. But my friend is like way out there. Like she'll she'll wear nothing, nothing, a swimsuit to Walmart. Yeah, that's a bit much. That's not slut shaming. That's just an attention whore, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. But some, you know, all attention is not good attention. You could find yourself uh, being followed and killed like that same night. A lot of women don't get how quick you can die behind off the hands of someone that don't give a fuck about you. And that's real talk, you know, and it's. You could be attracted, they could attract, you could, you could attract them and you could end up in six feet deep a week later. It's, it's real talk. And especially if you reject them, you ever rejected somebody and they were mad at you? Oh yeah. It's, hmm. it's a scary thing, but I will say this it's very in, weird. in Dallas, it would happen, but it's easier to happen here and they'll get away with it. Cause this is a right. lawless, this is a very very lawless state. You know, hmm. my neighbor across the street, her son was murdered. Okay. And he was trying to save someone's life. They're treating him as a perpetrator than the actual person that was stabbing this girl. Then it was a homeless guy. Then he turned around and stabbed this kid to death. Well, he shouldn't have approached the homeless guy. So why was the guy in a neighborhood that here pays prop very high taxes with his ass sticking out with a knife. Oh, that's right. People reported him twice before and the cops didn't want to do anything. Like the cops here are a joke. I don't know how it is in Texas. Like, do you feel safe in Dallas? Not really because they open carry and gun laws are great here. I mean, yeah. uh, they're, they're wonderful here. I mean, you can go anywhere with one right on your hip oh. and it's nothing. Oh yeah, it's, it's an open carry state here. You can carry it in your car, in your purse, and go everywhere with it. No one can stop you. They should give people a mental evaluation because there have been trans shooters at schools, not to be rude, but there have been transgender people or kids shooting at schools and they hide it from the news. It's like, this is, we're dealing with a mental disease now because people want to do these things to themselves. Uh, did we ever have transgender people in porn back in our era? What, 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 did we just have gay porn? I totally forgot. Of course we did. There was trans uh, uh, videos out that back then. Yeah, of course. But um, it was more, <clears throat> it wasn't as big as it is now. I mean, now the law, you know, they, now it's just wide open. You better not call um, someone that even looks like a man, a man, if they don't want to be called that. I'm a, I'm afraid to get sued right now, you know. <laughs> I don't know. The amount of times I've done it, I did it at CVS yesterday <laughs> when I went to pick up my my thyroid medication, and it's a man that's behind the counter masquerading as a woman. Okay, that job probably mm -hmm. could have gone to a woman, right? But they got to have their quotas. Okay, right. So this thing started getting an attitude. I said, "Look, I get you're confused about shit, but don't get a fucking attitude <laughs> with me because you can't no. spell the medication." Okay. Sir, right. I'm not a sir, I'm a ma'am. I said, okay, keep telling yourself whatever. So eventually they had to get the pharmacy manager because it got out of control, girl. Like it got right. escalated fast. Right. I had you know, fun I, though. I had such a good yeah, time. We had fun doing it. <laughs> I saw the thing when in, in a Planet Fitness where the mm -hmm. little girl was in there and the guy was in there shaving his whole beard in the women's restroom. And he said he was a man. He said he was a woman. He was shaving his beard. He was naked, like he had a peony. Uh -huh. And there's a little girl in there in the Planet Fitness bathroom with her grandma. Mm -mm. And they kicked the little girl and grandma out. 
See, the world's a crazy place. Why can't we just flip back like to the 90s or something when it was cool, everyone was living their lives and everything was great. It was so much fun, you know? And you were definitely right. a big part of the 90s. A lot of guys ask about right. you and Dominique Simone and who else? Janet Jackme. Did you know Janet? Oh, yeah. Yes, of course. I know. I talk to her all the time. We're great friends. Oh. You know, we all, a lot of the sisters, we stay tight with each other. Me, Heather Hunter, Spontaneous. Yeah. Janet, um, Kitten, we're all friends. Kitten, I know Heather. I ran into her in New York around the corner from my place. Kitten, who? I'm trying. What about Midori? Midori is good. Well, I hadn't seen her in a while, but I, um, I bet I can catch up with her though. You know, um, we we all kind of connect always. You know, and say hi, how's it going and stuff. Heather Hunter just had a baby. Yeah, I remember I saw that. I'm so happy for her. Oh, that baby is so pretty. I know yeah, everybody is doing something different, but, um, I wanted to, I wanted to ask you what you think about the, uh, STDs that's going on around here lately. Sure. Um, I think that they're not testing properly and I think it's no longer, um, adult film stars. It's people that are creating content and they're not testing properly. Like how we had it back in the day, you and I, I would get that's tests. what I wanted to ask you. Are they yeah. testing the way we tested? Like, I mean, how are they testing? They're not testing at all. They are. They're not like, it's not, we had a PCR by DNA test. Remember those? And, um, at the time I was under contract to Metro, they had the nurse come to my house because I was afraid of needles and, uh, it went flying out of my arm a few times. But the thing is we did PCR and we had the STD, we had the, um, an STD panel. These people, these days, you don't know who you're hiring. They're not stars. They're just the average. It could be like your neighbor. It could be the kid down the street, but they're, they're looking at IDs, but they're not looking at paper and people are just so careless in their lives. I mean, nowadays people are fucking and sucking without condoms, a total yeah, stranger at a about bar. To say, how is that working with the only fans? I mean, it doesn't make sense. I mean, do they know that this shit is going to spread like a, and run around like a badass child? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think they does care. And they're doing things. I mean, some girl did a gangbang supposedly of 6,000 people. I'm girl. like, fuck you, you know, 6,000 people, girl. That's how you loop a film because it's on the <clears throat> internet. And that's the beauty of existing before the internet is we did our stuff. It's out there. Mm -hmm. Are you going to find it though? Maybe, but it was yeah. way cooler. But you know, these people yeah, legit yeah. are walking around with stuff and they don't care. Some mm. places test, did like you? I've had some girls on that test mm -hmm. properly, but they're older. They're like in the thirties, late mid to yeah. late period to villain those girls. Responsibility, responsible. Yeah, but these young people don't give a shit. They're just doing their stuff. They're not getting the proper testing. There's a new STD out right now and um, is, is spreading around like the black community really bad. And like, it's called uh, TM7. Okay. It's called TM7. And it's a fungus disease, okay? It's a sexual transmitted Ew. disease, and it's spread through the mouth, okay? Ew. And you know that you know the mouth is the nastiest part of your body. The no, most most microorganism bacteria is in the mouth. Nowhere else compared to the mouth is disgusting. And so, you know how people don't brush their tongue, like uh, get all back there with the plaque and all that, and that's a fungus on your tongue as it is, right? So you go and give someone head with that and you, you have the TM7 and it's from just not being clean in the mouth, like not brushing your fucking teeth, literally. And it's a lot of people who don't brush at least twice a day or so. They don't brush at all. Some people don't brush at all, but they'll go and suck this dick, suck this dick. And then, that, you know what I'm saying? And just rinse their mouth out or something, or maybe not even that. Right. So that's how this disease spreads and it spreads orally so um after you start feeling the symptoms you'll get these spots all over your body like ringworm so it's a form of a ringworm but it's a std coming from the mouth i'm just letting you know it's terrible and um atlanta has the highest atlanta and memphis tennessee and texas houston texas has the highest std rate right now I'm talking 42,000 people in one day um, infected with syphilis. Okay. 
So I'm going to bring this up and it's probably going to, I mean, I just like to hear people's thoughts on this because everyone has a different thought. And I think the producer of the show knows what I'm going to say or ask. Do you think, Mm -hmm. because you're mentioning Texas, okay? That's a border state. Do you Mm -hmm. think that there are people coming in through the border that shouldn't necessarily be here that are bringing things here? Because we're getting a lot of it in LA. I absolutely think that. I absolutely think that. Absolutely. I mean, I've seen... Are you looking for a safe way to bet online where there is something for everyone, including yourself? Then go to betonline.ag where I'm sure you will find something. Don't forget, it's betonline.ag for the most variety and the safest way to bet online. I've seen um, a lot of people get these checks, right, from from our government and go and send the money right back to their family in another country. So regardless of the American government is not really helping America, you know, giving immigrants a lot of money, like thousands of dollars. I'm talking thousands. I'm talking stacks. And they send that money right back to their country. They're not send, They're not spending it in America. That's why we're the economy here is getting fucked up right now is because they are taking that money and sending it back to their countries. And that's what a lot of uh, immigrants do. They're going to take their money and send it back. They're not going to spend a dollar here, maybe a dollar or two to get some food, but yeah. not much. You feel me? Oh no. I'm, I've always said that since day one, especially when we had the mm-hmm. whole Ukraine thing going on. And then I was saying to a friend of mine, let's just go over the border and just come back here and just speak Spanish. And uh, let's just get the money. Uh, Cause they're getting $5,000 on a uh, prepaid card. They're allowed to take out loans against a home in the state of California, and they do not have to repay it back um, or pay it. They don't have to pay the uh, the taxes on it or something. But you basically it's our money paying for their homes. If they leave the state of California, then they have to pay it back. Tell me why it's it's a neglect by the fucking that 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 insane, senile, sick pedophile. Did I just a lot of bad to describe someone? That thing is that thing that thing is. Not there. <laughs> you think he's there? What Biden? I think they mainline him yeah. sometimes. Do you, I think they mainline him. You think Biden him. is actually there inside there? No. <laughs> is, not, no. I believe he's there, but I believe that they're mainlining him. Um, I don't believe that he's some kind of a weird shapeshifter, and I think that Stormy Daniels looks like Jill Biden. That she looks like the wife who I can't stand. Like every time I see her, she does kind of, doesn't she? Oh my! <laughs> wow. Maybe she's an illegitimate daughter. Now, um, I never liked Stormy, and I don't like what she did. Um, and you know, I, I I also got disgusted by Fat Fanny Willis in Atlanta, in Fulton yeah, County. I, don't like her ass either. I hate her with no, her fake lashes. I said we are on the same page with this thing. Because if you think by one chance I'm about to vote for these Democrats, you are out of your mind. Never. Well, I for think what? They, they used a lot of African American people to get the votes. Like Candace Owens, I respect. Uh, she has what is it? Not um, anymore. What? Not anymore. I used to, but she had blacks. Uh, That's what I liked her for. Then I joined uh, Lexit. Then Lexit is for the Latino community against um, the Democrats. So yeah. I've gone to, I've recruited people. It's sort of like a cult, but then I, I don't recruit people as much as I used to. <laughs> um, Candace, I used to like a lot. And then a lot of stuff just changed. But I, I like what she did at first when she's trying to spread the message. But there are other groups out there. So in Atlanta, yeah. they have blacks, blacks for Trump. What was it? They have, and I, and I shouldn't say it, niggas for Trump. I saw that mm-hmm. thing with the AS. <laughs> And then yep. there's this woman I thought of when I, I thought of you when I saw her, she had an American flag cowboy hat on. Okay. <laughs> and you should have heard her go girl. Like she's like, yeah, I don't know who these people are. Who this Biden thing? You don't tell mm-hmm. me I'm not black. Cause I didn't vote for you. I'm a black American mm-hmm. woman. And you're bringing in these people. And these migrants are taking our jobs and taking over our schools. I'm like, yeah, yep. that's it. Yeah, they are killing it, though, with the taking over the little hoods and stuff real quick, really quick. Well, he he went to Fulton County to get booked and you saw all the support. Everyone there was like cheering for Trump because 
people forget Fanny Willis probably put away, she put away her own kind, I'm sure. You think you're above yourself? And that guy, she cheated, he cheated on his wife, he cheated on his wife with Fanny Willis. She was gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, that lawyer. So I don't know what he well, was. Well, you know thinking. what that was all about? That's all about clout. That was about yeah. clout. He needed, he needed that, he needed to, to tame Fanny. Of course, he needed to get that fanny tame so that he can get that job, right? He needed that job. Absolutely. Well, girl, I'm not girl. I know the story. I'll tell you one thing, though. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do about voting yet, but I know I'm not I'm not voting for Biden. That's it. And I Biden might. thinks he can carry it? I don't think so. I might vote you for him for the heck of it. No, I'm, I'm not going to vote for him. I'm I joking. can't do it. I can't do it, though, because he's done too much damage, especially to black people. We don't have time for that. It's drama. I don't care who they got, Kamami, Kamami Harris, and all them. You know, I don't have time for her either. I don't want her to. Mm -mm. Well, I have two nope. scary words for you if he drops out or if, if something happens in between now and November, the two scary words you should think of are Kamala Harris. Yes. That's Kamami. Mm -hmm. Kamami. Can't do it. Camel yeah, toe. Kamami Harris. <laughs> I don't know. I'll tell you one thing. I won't be voting for her either. Sorry. I'll run I, for you know, I remember what she said a long time ago. She doesn't really cut for black people. So I don't have time for her ass. Now, so far, Trump is the only one that is really, you know, saying, standing up for us and saying the right things that we need to hear. He needs to say a little more. You know, we need a black crime bill. We're tired of being killed in the streets of America. They get the Asian crime bill. They got everybody's crime bill going on. Everybody's got protection but us. We're the ones that, you know, they want to kill. But we need a crime bill, too. We, we're American. We're just as American as anyone else. That's interesting you said that because we have an American flag, right? And that's to unite all of us. So I just want to get your thoughts on this. What are your thoughts on Pride Month when they insist on having a trans flag and a gay flag? Because I thought everyone is under that American flag. Oh, well, you know, for me, I feel like all of that is... Um, Obama's doing, you know, Obama was the one who gave them the rights to do their thing. And you know what I'm saying? To get married and do all that. And, um, he obviously did it for a reason, but, um, I do feel like, uh, yeah, we all should be under the same flag, but if they want to, you know, separate themselves, I say, you know, do you let them do them. Okay, do you do that? Do what you got to do to be to feel human on this earth, because that's everybody's main objective is to try and feel human on this fucking earth, which is hard because nobody really knows exactly how history went and how things went because everybody's changed it. So you can't really it's been layers and layers of you know, different fake stories. So you can't really do it. But I would say, I, you know, whatever. That's the way I'm feeling. Do people recognize you at all when you go out? Uh, sometimes, you know, I get some strange black man walking up to me. <laughs> hey, love you. You know, <laughs> or something like that. I love you. Hey, do that thing with your tongue, girl. <laughs> you do it? I sometimes I do it. I don't give a fuck. Sometimes I can't because you know my son used to play for Snoop Dogg and oh um, okay oh yeah I did I, I did a reality show on Netflix. It's called Coach Snoop. It's hilarious, girl. And Snoop, Snoop Dogg was my son's coach for years. He's like my he's like my brother or my uncle basically. Aww. Yeah, cool. so it's it's on the Netflix. It's been on there for ten years. Coach Snoop. So I'm gonna almost ten. I got to look for yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's on Netflix. It's been on there forever. My son, before he went to high school, they uh, filmed it. Yeah. Oh, so, wait. but, um, how old is he? He's 21. My son. Oh, 21. okay. Yeah. He's right. 21. I had him in at 2002. Okay. 
Yeah, I, I took time out to push something out. I pushed out a giant. My son is six foot eight. Oh my God. He's six eight. He wears an 18 in the shoes. His name is Maximus. Damn. <laughs> a basketball player in the making. Football player. Football, you know, football player. player. Okay. You know what? I um I will never do that again. Hell to the no no. Have a baby? Hell no. That shit hurt and hell no. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't do that. I just have I, a cat and I'm happy with that. Uh, yeah, I got two cats. That. I got a black cat named Osiris Leroy Bartholomew Williams. <laughs> oh, okay, my black cat, his name is Enzo and that's it. Just Enzo St. Clair. <laughs> oh, I love Enzo. That's cute. He's my cute. baby's name, Osiris. <laughs> He, and the other one is, huh? The other one is white. Her name is Perline Latoya. <laughs> Are they rescues? Of course, they were okay. both homeless. Yes, you know, I, I get the homeless ones, especially the black one. He, no one wanted his ass. So I said, you know what, dude? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Come with mama. Yeah, he's a cutie though. He's a cute bat. The black cats are the smartest. They do smart stuff. Yeah, my cat just walked into the doorway here when you said that. Oh yeah. <laughs> now he knows what's going on. I just feel guilty whenever I have to travel, so I'm just trying to figure out like what do I do to not have the separation anxiety. You know what? The cats cat actually have um, you know, there used to be a be a being called the Lyrans. They're like an a being that looks like human, but it's a cat face, you know, the Lyrans. Like the Pleiadians and the Oh, and oh, sorry guys. <laughs> you no. know, other people from other dimensions. No, you know what you're you know? saying, yeah. But I'm just yeah, like, concerned. Yeah. I don't want him to like think I'm ever leaving him for good when I go away because I always come back and he knows that even if it's like a week yeah. or two weeks. So I just feel so bad and guilty leaving him. But I think once I'm gone, he's like, oh, thank God she's gone. I don't have to get kissed every few minutes. I don't have to get picked up. He's fucking smothering me. Get her away from me. Because he's the first thing I see. He's like, hi. And then I, I completely let, I, I'm very, I think I, yeah, I think I smother him too much. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? Cats do talk back to you too. They really do. You go, you want to go outside? Yeah. yeah. They He's respond. not allowed outside. He's not allowed outside. I don't allow neighbors to look at him. I don't allow anyone to look at him when he's in my window. Like that's how crazy I get. And uh, once I had the door open, I was talking to someone and then, then oh, it's a cat. I'm like, don't fucking look at my cat. <laughs> get away, bitch. Yeah, it's my cat. It's my black cat. He's my, he's my everything. Yeah, no, he's. Enzo, how cute. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to come here during yeah. the, like, he knows when I'm doing sessions, he doesn't jump up on the table anymore like he used to. He doesn't jump up on my lap. He doesn't jump up um, by my speakers. So he's good. It's just, you mm -hmm. know, I got to get adapting. But hopefully I come visit you in Texas. And do you come out to oh, California anymore? That. I, I am. Yeah, my mom lives is still there. I can come anytime. I just she just left, so I'm gonna give it a minute. Cause you know she worked me. <laughs> she got on my fucking nerves, but she's so sweet. <laughs> you gotta be nice. But um, but uh, yeah. I um, when you come here, we can go. So, you know, I got a pool in the back, jacuzzi, all that. Pool boy. You know. Yeah, I got a pool guy. Yeah, he's a little weird, but I oh, like never him. Mind. He's cool. okay. <laughs> Pool we, guy? Well, no, we uh, have a pool guy. You want to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had a pool boy at the gym, and it was some middle-aged balding asshole with a pot belly, and he was hairy. Oh, wow. He didn't even know how to swim. It's like, ill. you're the one cleaning the pool. I complained to the gym. I said, why, you know, why do you have this guy cleaning a pool? He shouldn't hmm. be here. This is LA. He needs to have like a pool. You need a hot guy. Cleaning the pool. Right. I remember going to the um, the gyms all the time, and the older men they always pop their balls out so you can see them. <laughs> Ew, gross! I was just they do. The balls. They nasty. do it all the time. They actually pop one or two out, let you see them. Ew! 
I don't want to see some old guy's fucking balls. Like, I'm good with that. No, ill. You know, and then you get like the fat 20 something year olds too. It's like, what the fuck is up with people? There's surgery for this shit. You could even take Ozempic, you could take Majorna, you could take Terizapide, all these things, and you could be fine. You know what bothers me? The BBLs in the in the gym. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you about that. If you look at someone's face, you could tell if they had the BBL because when they do this on your body, they don't go to your face to remove fat. Mm-mm, mm-mm. And, and your, if your true. legs are too skinny, you can really tell. My legs are too skinny. <laughs> do, uh, do, are you rocking a BBL? No, I'm a hundred pounds. Where are they going to find no. it? <laughs> no, but I might get the implants though. So I'm talking to a doctor. I might do the implants. Cause look, I'm like, I'm like, I'm past 51 now. So it's like, I'm not 60. Eat I'm not 55. Eat some, gain some weight and get the fat transfer. I don't hold fat very well though. Well, so- I'll give you some. No, oh, I know. I asked the doctor, "Can I get a fat?" I got a lot of chocolate. I'll do. The, I'll just do the implants, the really small ones. The producer of the show has like been through the surgeries with me this year. I did under my eyes. Then what else did I did? I do like some really crazy skin peel. Then I did my Morpheus. I'm actually due for some kind of crazy skin thing in a few days, so I'll do it in a couple. Yeah, of weeks. I want to do some skin stuff, but I, you know, I had four boob jobs. I've had four breast implant surgeries and I got them all taken out. Now I'm just natural. Well, you I, I used know. to have, I, I was, I was rocking the breast implants for a while. And then when my son was younger, I would drop him off at school and all the principal, everyone's looking at these <laughs> and um, the coaches, everyone's looking at these, but I started having problems with mine, like water capsations underneath. Um, I was working out a lot and um you know, the more you lift, if you lift too much, like trying to keep your chest or your arm strong, you could find water capsations that get under here and you have to get them removed after a while. So I've had like four breast and four surgeries, period. And I got them taken out last year. So now I'm sitting with some pancakes with a little chocolate uh, little thing on the tip. That's a it. morsel. <laughs> a little morsel. Yeah, you should get them done again if you want. Cause like, but you're only going to live once. You can get them done again. Yeah, I was thinking of maybe just a lift, nothing major. A lift and maybe a, you know, fat transfer and a lift. I don't want to get implants again. I've had all the implants. I've had the water salines, the gels. I've had them all. The silicone ones. I've had them all. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, there you go, guys. I mean, maybe she'll get them. Maybe she won't. If you're nice, maybe she'll get them. If you're mean, she's not going to get them. I definitely <laughs> wouldn't do that. So do you have anything else you want to plug? And then what, what's, what's the story with your book? You're moving along on that. You're writing it. Uh, moving along on the book. Um, writing a book for your, about your, your life can be hard because you gotta, you gotta really tell the truth. So some of that hurts, you know, so. But it's going to be a really good book, I'm sure. And um, I'm starting my podcast soon, but I just don't know when. That's a problem. It's called Menage's World. I just haven't started it yet. And everyone, you can check me out on Instagram, though, at Real Menage. Follow her on Instagram, guys, Real Menage. And don't forget, as soon as, like, keep up with the work. And, you know, as soon as she has her podcast, listen to it, subscribe, and all that yummy stuff. Uh, definitely let me know when it's out and I'll promote it as well. Um, and I'll Thanks. definitely, I'll come to Dallas, but. Um, I would love that. Let's get us a steak and get us some cowboys. I, I like both parts of that. <laughs> I, I really do. I like yeah. this part too. I got some cute cowboys up there. Any, any single cowboys that, um, that like uh, women that are straight, we're here, we're single. Like, where the fuck are you guys? Seriously. <laughs> Yes, I've been single for over 20 years and I've never been married either. You're not missing out. No. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't get married because I could see myself getting up in the morning next to someone and they got that flab and you look over, it's like, ugh, gross. But yeah. Oh, God. I know, right? It's like, I'm telling you. I've never, I've never really, really show. Even had a long, my longest relationship was eight months. 
That's my son's father. Eight months, girl. I did it. I did it. That's a long, That's long. time. Fuck yeah. Eight months is a long ass time. For us, get out of here. <laughs> I was with someone for five years. What a waste. But he married someone that looks, that's that kind of, um, remember when you said you gave a description of your friend with the Walmart that looked like cheap trash? Yeah. That's what he ended up with. But you know, to each his own, mm. as long as he's yeah. got, I mean, he's, he's got kids with her supposedly, which I think is great because he always wanted kids. Good for you. Um, yeah. Because now that person has access to your wallet for 18 years. Okay. You know, which is smart. Good for her. Like you go, girl. I give her props all the way. Um, but yeah. so it was good seeing you and sit yes. tight. Wonderful seeing you. Yes. And you take care, baby. Love you. Love you too. Hang on. All right. See ya.